Okay, I'd like the kids to come up front. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So, you heard me just talking about the entrance of the Theotokos into the temple. And this is the icon here, that icon of Mary when she's three years old being brought to the temple. Can you find Mary in the icon? That's right. That's Mary. And, and this, is, this is her parents here. Does anybody know her parents' name? Anna is her mother. That's, mo that's her mother, Anna. And the father? Joachim. Joachim or Joachim. Joachim and Anna. At the end of every liturgy, we, we ask for their prayers for us, Joachim and Anna. They're really the grandparents of Jesus, right? Because Mary's the mother of Jesus, and this is the mother and father of Mary. These are the grandparents of Jesus. So I mentioned that. You heard me talk about that today. Do you know where the, do you know where the icon is in the church for the, it's actually here in a couple places, but there's a large icon in the church of this feast, one of the twelve great feasts. Very good, Emmanuel. It's right over there. That's that icon. And if you look at that icon right there, Mary's three year old and her parents, Joachim and Anna, you can see how it's very similar to this icon here. This is the icon. And that's the icon of the entry of the Theotokos into the temple. So I wanted to show you that, make sure you understood that, because that's the great feast we're celebrating today. But I also want to show you something different. Father, yes. My mom has the, the prayer that at the table, what, like the like the big one. Oh, good. Very good. Now, I wanted to show you something else. This is what you are thinking about studying today in church school, okay? This is another icon, and Mary is in this icon too, but she's older now. Here she is, and who's next to Mary here in this icon? Jesus. That's Jesus, that's right. And they happen to be at a wedding. They're at a wedding. And this is, we can find this in John's Gospel, in the second chapter of John's Gospel. The town that they're in is called Cana. So a lot of times we call this the wedding in Cana. And can you find the bride and groom in this icon here, the bride and groom? Yeah, you see them right in the middle there? That's the bride and groom. Jesus and Mary are there. Now, we read in the Gospel that uh, one of the things that they have at weddings uh, for the people to drink is, is wine. Yes, Georgie? Um, is it kind of spelled um, E-A-N-A? -A? Exactly. That's we how it's spelled. We have the Lives of the Saints book, and we've read that. Okay, so you've probably read this story then. So this is the wedding in Cana, C-A-N-A, -A, just like you said. And as I mentioned, one of the things that people usually drank at weddings is wine. Now, this is important to know. One of the reasons that people drank wine, and actually during this time, many years ago, they drank wine sometimes more than water. Because water, clean water, drinkable water, wasn't so easy to get. We're so used to getting water to drink anytime we want it. We turn on the faucet, we can drink the water. Father, uh, mm -hmm. Long ago, they have to get water from a well. Sometimes, and during this time, if they wanted water, they'd have to go to a well ah. to get the water. And so sometimes they would use wine as well. So in this case, there was a wedding. They had wine. One problem. They ran out of the wine. Now they had some large jugs of water. Six, in fact. 
But the water that was in them was not really drinking water. It was water for cleansing. Kind of like, like shower water, like bathing water. Now, the water that we drink is different than bathing water. Like if you took a bath, for instance, in some water, you wouldn't really probably drink the water after that, right? That's kind of gross, okay? So there's water for, for cleaning up. If you wash your hands with some water, you don't go then and drink the water after you wash your hands. That's kind of gross. So, so this water was more for cleansing, and it wasn't really for drinking. And Jesus said, I even got a picture here of that, I think. Okay, so if you can picture... If you can picture a shower, okay, if you can picture a shower and the water coming, water coming out of the shower, okay, what does that say? Water, water, okay. Yes, Alexander. That's an icon of the dormition of Mary when Mary died and all the apostles were around her. Dormition means to fall asleep in death. It's not like sleeping when we go to sleep at night. It's sleeping to die. So that's a different thing. So here we have an example of a shower, okay? That type of water, which isn't really what we drink. Now, the water that Jesus, that was there at the wedding, Jesus, Jesus' mother, Mary, she said to Jesus, what should we do? And then she told the other people, she said, do whatever Jesus tells you. And so Jesus said, bring that water over here. And so they brought the big jugs of water. And what did Jesus do? Do you know what he did to the water? What did he do? He turned it into wine. So if I do this here, if I flip over this, this is actually the same picture, the exact same picture. If you flip it upside down, we can picture this is now a wine cup. And what does this say here? Wine. And now it says wine. It's actually the same thing. It's kind of an optical illusion. Isn't that kind of cool? I thought that was kind of cool and I wanted to show you. So Jesus, Jesus takes the water and it was used for cleansing. He turns it into something else that's very useful at this wedding. And it made me think of, too, it made me also think of how God takes us. And we're made for certain things. We do certain things. But God can take what's used for something and then turn it even used for something better, even more special than we thought of in the first place. And I think of me, and I think of you, and how God is going to use us in our lives. And it's important for us to pray that the Lord uses us to help other people, to serve other people. Maybe we think we know how we're going to be in this world, but maybe God has an even more special purpose for us in this world to help others. Just like there was a, a more special purpose for that cleansing water to be wonderful wine at the wedding. It's something to think about. So this is what a little bit of our, what we'll be thinking about today in our church school class as we think of the wedding in Cana, in Cana today. Yes, Alexandra. I have a Bible. Good. And this story will be in the Bible. Do you remember what uh, there's... Four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who remembers which gospel writer has this story? It's in John's gospel. And who remembers what chapter it's in? Who remembers the chapter? Chapter 2. Chapter 2, that's right. And one last question. What service 
in the church do you think that we read this story that the priest holds the gospel and reads that story from? What service do we read that story at? The liturgy. The divine liturgy? Not really. It's not, that's not the one I was thinking of. There's another service that every time that service comes up, this is the gospel story we read. I'll give you a hint. It starts with a W and it ends with a E D D I N G. Wedding. Wedding service. Very good. Very good. Whenever we have the wedding service, the marriage service, this is the gospel reading that is done. Yes, Alexandra. Well, this is a very good question, too. You noticed my vestments. My vestments are a certain color, right? Yeah. What color are they? Blue. Today they're blue. And then yesterday was red. And last week was red. That's right. And so we wear blue in the church for... See, that's why you got your blue on today. We wear blue in the church for feasts of the Theotokos. Whenever we have a feast of Mary, of the Theotokos, the liturgical color is blue. On another day, I'll go through all the different vestments and everything I'm wearing, because that might take a while. So let's stand up and we'll pray together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, as we celebrate the entrance of the Theotokos in the temple, and as we remember our, as we remember how you changed the water into the wine, we pray, Lord, that you use us, that you use us for good in your world, in your church, and in our communities. Help us, Lord, change us to be to be fruitful workers in your vineyard, that we might bring good around us and we might realize and know the goodness of you living within us. We give you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Okay, you can go back to it.